when we are in reductionistic mentality, we look at the liver as being the liver and we treat the liver. That is all. And our society has raised us to be in a reductionistic mindset. The mind has nothing to do with the body, has nothing to do with the cosmos, has nothing to do with the this, has the, oh shit. This is the true definition of separation consciousness. But the other thing here is I, as a practitioner, can only take you as my client as far as I've taken myself. Otherwise, I'm not going to know what I'm looking at. If I haven't treated myself to that level, I have no idea what I'm looking at. So it's not their fault. They can't see that. All they can see is a sick human sitting in front of their face. When we pause and connect and make the choice to open, literally open that lens all the way up, then you get to take in some of the stuff that's been sitting on the periphery telling you everything you need to know. And in fact, you're saying some of it, but it's because the openness may or may not be there that we can't see other little pieces and parts that are laying within the field, sitting right there, little nugs. Welcome to Masters of Self University podcast, your highest source of sacred truths and universal wisdom. Hello, beautiful souls. I'm Rachel Fiore, mystic, spiritual teacher, psychic healer, and founder of Masters of Self University. Join our journey of soul transformation as we deep dive into this latest episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Masters of Self University podcast. I'm your host, Ellie Lee. And I'm your host, Danny Molly. And today we are joined by mystical coach of oneness, Rachel Baker. Hello again. Thank you for having me on uh, so soon again <laughs> after the last one. <laughs> All pleasure. Yeah. So love the title of what you want to discuss today. Um, so let's just get right into it. Yeah, I want to talk about this because we... We're in transition right now. A lot of people in healthcare and mental, emotional wellness, you know, we're in this transition now of we're stopping looking at just the symptoms and treating the symptoms. We're looking for the cause. And we start at the very beginning, my degree, uh, double major in athletic training and exercise sciences. When I got out of school, I was hired and congratulated for treating the symptoms because the athlete would get injured on field. It was normally acute. They'd come off the field. We would assess it, treat it. And you're congratulated for getting the athlete back out on the field. So yay for me. But as soon as I went to bodywork school in 2000 in San Diego, I was introduced to this brand new concept that here we have a symptom, but there's an underlying cause. And because my brain wasn't thinking that way yet, it really didn't land and it, it it didn't land anywhere. It was just like, yeah, whatever. When a person comes in my office back then, they were a calf injury. They were a back injury. They were a neck injury. And my brain never went any further than that. Throughout the last uh, 24 years, you know, especially when I met Paul Check and did the Check Institute work, I went up to level three. After that training, I could not ever look at the symptoms other than just a doorway after that. But it took a long time to notice that 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 shift needed to happen for me. It took a long time to be able to see through everything. And then with uh, myofascial release training with John Barnes and his team, now there's no possible way I could just look at the symptoms nor like have much desire to even really treat the symptoms. I, I'll treat the symptoms because you, I want you walking out of the office with, you know, a little bit of results as far as what you came in with. But I'm also going to help you um, guide you towards what might be actually going on. And it's interesting because you might come in with a calf injury and I have to meet you where you're at, right? So you come in with a calf injury and I've got to ask 10 or 15 questions to get a full understanding of the holistic viewpoint. So maybe it's an adhesion in the hamstring. 
caused by biomechanical breakdown in the hip, caused by the psoas muscle, caused by the nervous system get tripped off, caused by emotional response to something that happens outside of you, caused by mental programming that says, I'm going to do this wrong, I'm going to get in trouble, caused by growing up with controlling rigid parents. Now, when an athlete walks through the door and their calf is irritated, you could see the issue with saying, oh, well, you probably had controlling and rigid parents. They're like, well, no, um, my calf hurts. <laughs> so with our work, it's very similar. You know, at MSU, we are listening to the symptoms, but, you know, our team of people, where we see beyond that and we're looking to actually treat the cause, the deeper rooted issue. And why would you just want to, uh, why would you want to treat the cause? I know why I just want to, um, you know, want the listeners to hear from your experience. Why would you want to treat the cause? Yeah. Rather than just walking in and if I walk in, I've got, you know, knee pain, but, Rachel Baker, can't you just treat my knee pain? I've just got all this pain in my knee. Can you know? Yeah, I sure can. Away? Yeah, I can get you symptom free in a good 30 to 45 minutes. Yep. And then I will see you back here in four weeks with either that same thing or something new <laughs> that's interrelated. And if I don't treat the cause, the actual root cause, it is going to become ground substance it's going to find its way into ground substance matter because this is the most dense of that you're experiencing you are experiencing in the human form this is ground substance right here once it comes and crystallizes in the fascia that's when you're starting to feel the physical symptoms the physical ramifications of things Right. It's the, the most dense form of energetic kind of manifestation. And so if we understand that we're constantly co-creating our lives, if we're constantly creating ourselves from an energetic standpoint, when things get so cemented in and so hardened, and as you, I like that word you use, crystallized, they start showing up in our physical reality. And then, as you mentioned at the beginning, because I've done this throughout my life or throughout the last, you know, three years of doing this work is that symptom then becomes an open doorway to understand, okay, I've got pain here. What is it trying to teach me? What is it? What is it showing me? What is the underlying thing? Because I've done the, Hey, I've got this pain. Let me go see a running coach. And that didn't work. Hey, I've got this pain. Let me see a physical therapist. And that didn't work. Hey, I've got this pain. Let me go see a doctor or a whatever you want to call it, a, an acupuncturist or all the different amazing different healing modalities we have. But at the end of the day, nothing was addressed at the root level, so nothing permanently healed. It was it it would maybe help for a little while doing this mobility ro routine, but the symptom would always come back. And then it's like, okay, well, there's clearly an underlying cause here. There's something that's creating this pain in my body. What is that? Why? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, for me, since I was a kid, you know, I had all these gut issues and the amount of gastroenterologists I've seen, the amount of doctors I would sit there and they'd be like, you need more veggies. You need more fiber. You know, I did endoscopies, colonoscopies. I did, you know, everything and anything under the sun to understand what was going on and nobody could figure it out. And I spent years and years doing that and I was still in immense pain and nobody's teaching me what the root of what all of this is. And it was through this work where I realized like, oh my God, it's all of this trauma that I've absorbed from the abuse that I underwent. And obviously also like lifetimes of this, but just trapped in there. And it wasn't until I started actually listening to what the pain was saying 
instead of like shoving cameras down my throat or shoving pills or, you know, shoving laxatives and all these things that I started to actually hear what the pain was saying. And a lot of what the pain was saying was like, please stop treating me this way. Please stop hurting me. I'm in so much pain. I don't know if I can ever heal from this. I don't know how to get out of this. And it was when I started working with that, when I started to really understand like, holy shit, this is what is so missing from the world. Nobody's teaching us. And like, th that is crazy to me that we're only giving one part of the equation to people and like just shoving shots and like pills and surgeries and all these things down people's into people's bodies, but nobody's teaching them where the root cause of any of th that's crazy to me. And then it's, it's one of those moments like, where the fuck do we live that that is so missing from our world and how many people suffer and even lose their lives as a result of it? It's really sad. Well, it's the perplexing nature of the reductionistic mentality. When we are in reductionistic mentality, we look at the the liver as being the liver and we treat the liver. That is all. Yeah. There's a few things to say about this. One, it's no quote unquote fault of any of these practitioners, that's what we've been trained to do. Right. And our society has raised us to be in a reductionistic mindset. The mind has nothing to do with the body, has nothing to do with the cosmos, has nothing to do with the this, has you like, oh shit, this is the true definition of, of separation consciousness. But the other thing here is I can only take you as far as I've taken myself, and John Barnes teaches that in our MFR courses, Rachel teaches that. I, as a practitioner, can only take you as my client as far as I've taken myself. Otherwise, I'm not going to know what I'm looking at. If I haven't treated myself to that level, I have no idea what I'm looking at. So it's not their fault. They can't see that. All they can see is a calf muscle, all they can see is a sick human sitting in front of their face. They're not even asking the question, oh, you're type two diabetic. Interesting. Do you drink coffee? There's no link between those two things in, in that mentality. It's just that you got type two diabetes. Let's treat the type two diabetes. Let's not at all look at your diet, your lifestyle, your stress level, how you got yourself here. Because I haven't looked at that for my own self yet. So I wouldn't even know what to tell you, girl. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, through my journey of understanding all this, it when we live in a lot of duality, and this, this happened to me when I first started tapping into, um, oh, well, I've got to find out what the root cause is because there's a there's a an energetic component that's creating this pain this symptom in my life but then what can happen is the the spiritually uh, immature part of us can throw everything else out and be like well i just have to address the root cause which we do want to do but that doesn't mean to throw every modality everything out the window and not take care of the physical component and the physical symptom and just be in this place of well it's all like it's it's all energetic and it's all like you know a deep deep you know childhood yeah it is it is that but also and this is what i've learned bringing in a modality like you know working on your movement in combination to doing the deep work like that's what's going to allow you the most amount of benefit you it's not and and we can go to gut issues because this is something I, i've struggled with um it's not just oh well my gut's messed up because i've got a lot of emotional trauma down there so let me just eat it doesn't matter what i eat let me just eat whatever i want because it's i just have to heal the trauma part of healing the trauma could be to follow this particular um what and i don't like using the word diet but guidance or you know following okay well well what do i have to do in order to honor what my gut saying 
maybe to heal my gut and part of the process is to cut out gluten or is to cut out dairy or is to do whatever and it can be easy and i've definitely heard people um kind of fall into this category to just throw everything out and just rely completely on the spiritual and it's almost a way of like bypassing everything else and just um giving everything else up just to focus on the spiritual the energetic component but not realizing that it takes a combination normally of these things that we have to honor the fact that there is physical pain showing up at, at what did you say like ground zero or ground level whatever um you said there that we have to still honor that and do the deeper work to find out okay well what is causing this is it an aspect of you know my inner child or my shadow showing up we have to remember that here is the fascia the inner web not only of this system here i'm pointing at this human body this dense human body this thing that i have we also much re recognize the inner web and the, the fascial makeup of the stuff that you don't see and everything in between. So if I have a restriction in my small intestine and I pull on that little restriction, we, we do our very best to un understand the tensegrity model as it relates to the fabric of it all. So if I pull on that restriction anywhere else that there's restriction, I'm going to affect every single one of those things. So you're so right. We have got to take care of the restriction that's in the small intestine, parasite, fungus, gluten intolerance, um, ulcer, um, emotional stress, living with somebody who continuously, um, judges you, belittles you, criticizes you. Notice what happens to your guts when somebody comes in and they instantaneously criticize you. And you can feel that when you pull on that restriction, that it's all interlinked. Okay, now I have this emotional component. Yeah, it's in there, but I, I, I actually have to treat the ground substance too. And only to realize that Damn it. Every single time they walk into the room, I know they're going to criticize me. My gut sees up and I know that I should be afraid. All of that is interlinked and it's being fed by all kinds of stuff around us too. We might see something happen over there and it triggers that same response. And when the restriction gets tight, the tensegrity model kicks in and everything else gets tugged. So we have to treat Yes, we have to treat the symptoms, but it's who of us to start traveling through the fabric of whatever that reality is and find the actual cause of it. Yeah, and what I've found if I, if I don't look for the cause, I'm in denial <laughs> of what's really happening. Um, I'm not actually ever gonna heal if I don't actually do the work to find out, okay, well, what's actually causing this? And if I don't um, support my body through that process of actually getting to find out the cause, and I, there's a part of me that I'm constantly, I'm still working through, which is this stubborn inner child that does just does what it wants to do. It eats what it wants to eat. Um, and if I just allow that to happen and I fall into the energy that comes up to me whenever I'm working through healing physically is hopelessness. Like there's no point because everything's hopeless because it's never going to get better. And there's a lot of powerlessness there for me. Um, and that's what I constantly have to work through. But if I don't, if I just fall into the defeated hopelessness and the powerlessness, then I'm not actually taking the steps to provide the um, the space for my body to heal, whether that's talking about, you know, a physical pain that um, I'm experiencing in the gym or, you know, something along that, or whether I'm talking about my gut. If I don't provide my gut the actual 
the nutrition and the if I just bombard it with pizza and chocolate, which is what that inner child wants, I'm not allowing that part of that that ecosystem that's in there to actually thrive. I, I need it needs to be this combined effort, this this beautiful bridge and flow of yeah, go in, feel the the deeper powerlessness that's in there, the hopelessness, and give that part the guidance that it needs to thrive. And that means maybe not eating the chocolate brownie today, maybe having an apple instead, uh, and and not bypassing the the symptom because the symptom may flare up, and that may bring up a bunch of programming. But if I'm constantly just feeding the the energy that's in there there becomes a point where i can be like well i can just make a different choice right now where i don't feed that energy of powerlessness and hopelessness and actually find my power in doing this thing of following this diet of following this mobility plan um and that will you know allow me to continue my path of healing by supporting myself yeah and you 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 bring up a beautiful point which Rachel teaches when we are in lack of one of the 20 universal ways of oneness and what really comes to me right now is when we are in lack of connection with our heart and our soul that is where I find a lot of people myself included with certain aspects will fall into the trap of indifference is if i come from separation consciousness it's much easier to be indifferent fuck it who cares doesn't matter anyway that's separation consciousness that's the powerlessness that's the helplessness that's the hopelessness but if we become the way of connection and we're in connection with our heart and our soul how could you possibly be indifferent you can't. There's no such thing as indifference when it's the way of connection. So I'm finding for myself or for my clients that if I am ever if I'm ever indifferent and I'm like, yeah, fuck it. I'm just gonna do whatever the fuck I want to do. If I'm in indifference, I'm probably not connected. And so I have on my whiteboard in my bedroom, it says, Are you connected to your heart? So if some if I'm wanting to do something or or uh, yeah let's just leave it right there if I'm wanting to do something that I know is not healthy for me I got to go to that whiteboard and I have to say am I deeply connected in my heart right now in my soul am I emotionally energetically emotionally attached to the situation and am, am I running mental programs and I get through that checklist and I still do it hey <laughs> my fault you know but at least there's this conscious effort to say like hey where are you at what are you doing what's up yeah i i'm sure m maybe both of you guys can relate to this but underneath a lot of when i make these choices of not listening to myself and not honoring myself i get to this program of i don't actually give a fuck about myself like i hate myself like who fucking cares what i do like it's all this attachment to the suffering. It's all the attachment to the pain. And it's the attachment to this very, very disconnected inner child who like, no one seems to give a fuck about me or the pain that I'm feeling. So who cares? So I'll just destroy myself. And like, you know, when you were speaking, it reminded me of like the years that I was bulimic. You know, when you get to a place where you're throwing up your food, that is the ultimate. I don't give a fuck at all what I'm doing to myself. And that there's a lot of pain there for me. And I'm still not in a place where that's fully healed, which is why I self-destruct a lot of times. And which is why I just choose to destroy because it's what I've learned over the years to do to myself. And so I know that will, it's going to take me some time to really heal that. And, and Danny and I talk about this a lot of times too. Like when you're, when all those pro it's like a tornado of programs and then you just get your world in, in it. And then it's like, at that point, fuck it, you know? And then it's, and then when you're at the end of it, you're like, what did I just do? And then there's all this grief that comes over me of like, holy shit. It allows me to see 
how deeply ingrained this program of I don't give a fuck what happens to me, what I feel, because I don't give a fuck about myself. And so, yeah, there's a lot of healing there for me, at least, that I'm doing with that. And it's still not all the way. Yeah, I run that program all the time. And it's specifically related to what I'm speaking about this is the gut. Um, is that part of me that comes alive um, that I'm working on healing this like stubborn little entitled child. Um, it doesn't care about anyone else because when I tap into it, no one cared about him. That that's the energy that's, that's underneath there is like, well, no one was there to guide me. No one was there to give me any direction. So why would I ever listen to anybody else? And then that that energy which which is in there is no one gave a fuck about me, so I don't give a fuck about anyone else, uh, in, including you, Danny, who is trying to tell me what to do, tell me what to eat. Like, where were you? And this is what I was going into last night. Like, where were you growing up? Where were you when I needed guidance? Like, why are you telling me to do this now? Like, you could have told me to, like, no one was there for me when I was a kid guiding me that I shouldn't have. <laughs> what I'm seeing right now is me reaching for the jar of Nutella and just covering my toast with it. Like, there was no, for me as a kid, there was no guidelines of like, hey, you can have a little bit of chocolate spread on your, you know, your toast right now. But when you put loads of it on, you know, this is what's going to happen. This is the consequence of what's going to happen in your body. Like, it's not going to create harmony. There wasn't any of that for me. And so it's just so hardwired in there. And that energy that's in there, it's very destructive. And it's very, I don't give a fuck about anyone else. I don't give a fuck about you. And that means I don't give a fuck about myself. Uh, and that's what it comes down to. And that energy is just, it's wreaking havoc within me and creating so much um, harm, like physical. I mean, it's not like physically harming me in the sense of like ab abuse, but it, it is a form of self-harm and abuse of like not taking care of yourself, not not choosing to eat the right thing at the right time to create harmony within your body. I, I keep saying the word harm and harmony, and it's just really interesting how <laughs> the word harm is, you know, very, we'll use the word negative. And then harm money is like, you know, the 20th way of oneness. Mm -hmm. It's just so interesting how that that's in there. But um, yeah, I, I really run that program and it's very, 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 very destructive. And, and that's what happens to a child that when they feel like no one cares about them, they, I mean, there's a different programs that we create, right? But when nobody takes the time to really guide and mentor and uh, teach the child, and they're just left to their own devices or flip side. Cause I think this is the case for you, Ellie. There is no choice. There's the opposite of, of permissive parenting, which is what I experienced a lot of, which is no guidance. And then for you, I know there's a lot of no freedom, too much rigidity, too much. It's got to be this way. And you don't have any say that creates the same. Well, fuck me it's not not they don't care about me they only care about what they want there's no consideration for me and my feelings and then that can create that low self-worth lack of self-esteem like i'm worthless piece of shit that's what's that's what always comes up for me it's like i'm a worth worthless piece of shit and therefore why would i care i should just keep destroying myself and doing whatever the hell i want and that creates a lot of harm well, neglect is a doozy. It's definitely a doozy and it creates a lot of addictive tendencies. And there's going to be a point at which we have all these recognitions and we have all this awareness and we have to become the advocate for ourselves. Yes, there was nobody there and hell yeah, it caused a lot of pain. And 
We're not going to do that today. Now is not the time, buddy. And he's going to have to throw a temper tantrum, call you names, get pissed off, whatever it is. But at some point, we have to become the advocate for ourselves and say, you know what? No, it's not what we're doing right now. <laughs> and it can be, it feels like it's that shift for a lot of people that needs to happen. Here's the awareness. I realize my patterns. I realize what I do to myself. I can see it all. Here's the stubbornness. I'm going to have to make a choice. And I notice it's like a crossroads, right? I'm going to have to make a choice. I'm either going to continue doing what I'm doing or be an advocate for that little kid. Finally be the dude, the woman, the guidance, the coach, the teacher that this dude needed, this little guy needed. You know, say like, yeah, 100%. No, no, Dan, no, 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 no. You don't buy it. It's not in the house. Not in the house. You can't consume it. Yeah, and I've been doing this a lot, and the the and Ellie and I are going to record a podcast on this. Um, but one of the ways that I tap into that is through fasting, because um, then there's there's no choice. There's no I'm I'm not eating today, and so that little kid comes out and he throws a tantrum, and I have to work through it. Um, it's very beautiful. The hard part is um, when we're not at a level of consciousness where we can be that guide so what what we're describing here is being yeah. the mystical parent and this is something that we we coach in the power within program this is something that we teach all of our clients is how to become the mystical parent and how to be that guidance for our child our inner child to allow them to mentally emotionally spiritually to mature we've all physically matured as adults but we're trapped mentally, emotionally, and spiritually at a younger age. And so the mystical parent is all about allowing ourselves to mentally, emotionally, and spiritually mature out of the current experience we're having that's creating the suffering, the pain, whatever it may be, the negative experience. And what's, what I found is extremely difficult is being that mystical parent when I lose my state of consciousness. So when I'm able to be who I feel like right now, Danny, right? And an aspect of me gets activated and triggered and it comes up and I'm still able to be within myself and go, oh, here is this program. Let me do the work, see what's running here, alchemize, heal it, and then offer the right guidance as the mystical parent. That's how we heal and transform and that's the work that we do. But what can happen with certain wounds, and I found this, and this is going to be different for everyone, the stuff can open up, and this is the case for this particular program, and we fall into the unconsciousness of the program. And from the unconsciousness, I don't realize that I need, I, I don't realize that I'm at that crossroad, right? Mm -hmm. I don't realize that there's a choice. I'm acting out the unconscious program. I'm, I'm in that um that stream of consciousness and then it, as ellie said it's not till we get to the end of this like the end of the pattern then we go oh my god what did i just create what did i just do and then then that's when we can then create the shame spiral of oh my god i know that this was wrong and i shouldn't have done this and then we can fall down that one so we have to be careful not to create that don't need to create all of that shame and judgment on ourselves. We can allow some grace here that we did lose our consciousness. And it, that's the challenge that I'm finding is, is healing that, um, that part of me when it takes over. And once it's taken over, it's like, um, and it's, this is the, the difficulty, the nature of this program is blinders. Like it doesn't want to listen and hear anything and so it's really require, requiring me and this is what i was reflecting on last night to one become the way of presence because if i'm the way of presence then i'm i'm listening i can receive um but then i'm not always the way of presence and so last night i was realizing well before i become present let me work on just being patient with myself i'm showing up very responsibly i'm doing the work when i can but i'm not patient with the fact that this part of me is going to take probably longer than i i want i want it to heal now and this is what i realized i want to i want to heal this part of me right now i want to be at that crossroads all of the time 
But the truth is, when this part comes alive, I don't realize that that's happening. And so I need to be first. The second way of on this is just patient with myself as I, as I trip, fall, fail, go down all the way to the end of the pattern and be like, oh, I did it again. But each time I'm doing that, I am raising my level of consciousness as long as I'm connecting and I'm doing the work of becoming the ways and healing the energy that's there. And uh, there's power that I'm finding now in just being patient with myself to get to that place of um, actually being able to hear and realize I'm at the crossroad. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> journey. <laughs> it's a journey, but yeah, I, I'm I'm totally there with you. And for me, it's been really it's really painful to see all of it and then how much I don't want to see how I don't show up for myself. And I think it's this for me being the mystical parent when I'm in it is so difficult for me. I find myself choosing a lot of the time just to get lost in it. It's like I can feel myself at a choice point and then I constantly choose. I'm just going to get lost in it. I'm just going to get lost in it. It's not a big deal. You know, it's, 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 it's not that harmful and that's, what's fucking me up so much. But the more awareness that I bring to seeing the choice point is allowing me to now shift into a place where I can make another choice. But before it was so unconscious, it would just be like, I'm in it. That's it. We're done. And now like even yesterday I was, I was, I had a really hard day yesterday and I found myself wanting to self-destruct. And I chose self-destruction. And as I was self-destructing, I was aware very much so of what I was doing. Well, whereas before I couldn't see that. And so I know that moving forward, it's okay, here's the choice point. Now, what are we going to do? You know, I, I, the three of us were in this huge healing that I experienced last week with Rachel Fury. And in the healing, it was allowing me to see how much I choose suffering and how much I choose powerlessness and how unconscious we are to know that there is even a choice, right? Because of the attachment for so long. And so now with the self-destruction and now with all of this stuff with my gut, I'm at the stage where I'm seeing it for all that it is. And now it's up to me. You know, who can I blame when I'm, when I'm in it or I'm in so much pain than myself now? Now there is no one to blame. It is me that has to make that choice. But before it was such an unawareness that there would that even existed because there was so much attachment to the suffering. There was so much attachment to self-destruction. It is so much victim in there of like, I am a victim, you know, and, and, and owning that and wearing that instead of actually healing it and seeing it for what it is. Um, yeah, it's a journey it's a journey. And that's exactly what I was saying. Like, uh, and that that's beautiful for me to reflect on when when a lot of things get activated and triggered the work that we're doing is learning how to detach from it so we mm -hmm. can hold it up to the light and alchemize it but we can't alchemize something that we're holding on to yes because we're not in surrender to it so when we're holding so tightly to something we don't have the space to actually see what it is uh, and what we're doing and what we're creating in that moment and from that place that's when we can actually start the process of alchemy but until we release that grip that we're holding so tightly on and then we have to address well and this goes back to you know the name of the podcast what is the cause what's the cause of me holding on to food is the example that we've been using today for me like why am I holding on? And that's the root cause. The root cause isn't, well, it's the entitled kid that's showing up. But, and this is what I'm constantly going into, why is he so resistant to listening to me? And it's, I don't want to feel the powerlessness that's in there. The feeling of being totally out of control. And the only way that I learned to control my feelings was to eat. Mm. And if I can learn how to dissolve the attachment that's in there, then the um, 
then I can detach from the program and actually see it for what it is instead of when we're attached to something that gets activated and we just get lost in it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, th this became really complex for me in a very short amount of time. So I have to kind of, uh, I have to take a pause <laughs> because it's all, it's all bound up in a, in a rubber banded mess. And when we can take the pause and step back and take more of a broad view of it, a holistic view, we can hone in a little bit more on what actually needs to be taken care of right now in this moment because fear is myopic when we have a lot of fear come over us the lens gets super tight and then if we're triggered into a stream of consciousness that doesn't help us make great decisions we're going to read and feel and see everything through that tiny little lens so when we pause and connect and make the choice to open literally open that lens all the way up then you get to take in some of the stuff that's been sitting on the periphery telling you everything you need to know and in fact you're saying some of it but it's because the openness may or may not be there that we can't see other little pieces and parts that are laying within the field sitting right there little nugs um, and that's why I've got the whiteboard at home. <laughs> I got a lot of notes for my eyes. So if my eyes can read that language, it hits me somewhere, even though I'm myopically focused in on you, mind starts going nuts. Emotions start going nuts. I go to look at that whiteboard. I'm like, oh, there I am. I wrote that 30 minutes ago. There I am. I'm right there. I'm right there. I'm going to stay right there. I'm going to stare at this thing right here and don't make any decisions. I don't move anywhere. I just stand right in front of that, that board. And it helps us open up just, just a little bit that lens, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean... If I could walk around with a board, if you, if you want to follow me around with a board, that would be extremely. No, just get it tattooed in your, house. Un, in your eyelids. So when you blink, you can see. Well, there I'm assuming go. most of this is happening in your house. Yes. Uh, no, at work, no. house, <laughs> anywhere, anywhere. <laughs> the, the, I mean, it goes back. It's, it's the issue is when this level, when this stream of consciousness gets activated, it won't allow me to see beyond um it will create programs of justification of rationalization and it's not until i've gone through the motions that i'm like oh it mm. manipulated me again it mm. tricked me oh i haven't eaten yet today i've been fasting for 24 hours it's okay for me to eat now and instead of actually checking in it's like it will it will say things and use things to to trick me and then it's not until i've moved through the motions oh you don't need to go look at the board i'm like oh okay you know are you willing to hear something are you open to hear something right now oh yeah of course that i heard it will yeah yeah and this was something like, wait a minute huh who what <laughs> yeah so i and i know here for sure there's entities that um that feed on this through me um and then last night what i was diving into was the um the separation still that i see between this part of me and my true self so there's mm. there's obviously there's me and i know me and i know what i feel like but when this aspect of me gets activated it doesn't feel like me because I know it's not me. And then it's like, a, it's an entity, a stream of consciousness that I, has been created when I was a kid that's now running. And then when I wake up from the, oh, I realized I just allowed that. 
it's there's still an aspect of me that's it actually feels very separate from me it doesn't feel um like i'm doing it it feels like it's doing it it's something outside of me which is um controlling and manipulating and there, there's an element of truth to that because this is how these entities do actually work is they play on our wounds they feed on our wounds and to go a little deeper this is the spiritual world that we're all in we don't realize a lot of the thoughts and feelings that we're having and, and behaviors that we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis may not come from you it may be something outside of you that's feeding on your programs and wounds that's causing you to do certain things. And that's not to, if that brings up any fear or powerlessness, got to go in and heal that. Um, but that is the truth of what we're experiencing right now. There is a lot of stuff that's going on in the collective that's purposely there to feed on the powerlessness is the the easiest one or the fear that we have within us that will lead us to do certain things another big one is shame is when we carry a lot of shame we do shameful things when we carry a lot of like that deep lustful programming there is certain energies out there that will feed on that and draw you in to do have those experiences to live out that trauma um and so there's still an aspect of me that i've not fully integrated and accepted and i can't fully see how this part of me is me and i'm working on at the minute of just embracing that and being like no you are this way this is what i was working on last night you are this way it goes back to some of you were saying i think before the podcast which is like seeing yourself oh i I am showing up in this way. And until I fully claim that and see, yeah, yeah, I am showing up this way, I'm showing up as this entitled, stubborn inner child, until I fully embrace that, I'm not seeing the truth. I'm, I'm, I'm creating separation. I'm, I'm living with blinders on. And ironically, that's exactly what this program does. Yeah, and that's why we call it the blind spot, right? And it, it takes a certain amount of time and unfolding to be ready to see what's in the blind spot. Because if I tell you what the blind spot is, and that I've learned through experience and making a bunch of mistakes, that if I tell you what the blind spot is and you're not ready to hear the blind spot, you're going to deny the blind spot and possibly punch me in the face. So we learn about patience and we learn about the unfolding and we learn about the process but rachel said in one of our meetings maybe last week that i had brought up that one of the most helpful things for me has been the amount of pressure applied and then the alchemy happens so it's like if we don't have this crap happening in our lives and we're not challenged in any kind of way through the pressure we're not as likely to <sighs> right you got to have that certain amount of pressure and i've had like you guys have watched me over the last two and a half three years like there's been a lot of pressure applied but what ends up happening is we're willing we're like okay i know this sounds crappy i know it's gonna be hardcore but i'm willing and I'm going to keep on showing up. Oh, that hurt. Oh, my God. That's gross. Oh, that's disgusting. I can't even believe this is so embarrassing. There's that pressure. It's just enough. You're still willing. You're still devoted. And then something changes. So, like, I think it's, it's really about our openness, our availability. You're, you're right now bringing it. It's like you're bringing it now even by discussing it being open about it and you know taking responsibility for ah oh, shit this thing is here and i don't know what it is and then i think that that um that part of the process is probably pretty important i want to deny that it's important because i i run some inpatient programs too but i can see the value in all of it you know yeah let's talk about pressure there for a second because you spot on and this morning when i woke up i had to work through a bunch of stuff and 
uh, all related to this. And I just got to a place this morning where the pressure had built and I'm like, the energy that I'm in right now with it, I was like, I've had enough. Like I, I, and this is something that I constantly get into. Um, but it, it's like, no, I'm sick of your shit. I'm not going to allow you to keep doing that. This, this is me speaking to this, this other aspect of me. Like, it's like, I, the part of me is finding its power now to be like, no, you're not, you're not running the show. And I, there's been enough pressure built up that now I'm like, I'm sick of it. I'm I'm pissed off with like the way that you're just ruining and running the show and ruining my life. So no. And that's what that aspect of me needs. And this goes to what you were saying. Sometimes we need to allow all of that pressure to build up to hit that that boiling point where it's like, okay, the the soft approach that we've been doing isn't working. But we have to set and create these boundaries from power. And this was something I was reflecting on last night is not to then flip flop into, well, I'm just going to force you to do because the force just creates more rigid, rid, I can never say this word, rigidity. Uh, did I get it? I was like, awesome. Your body's rejecting um, it. Um, and uh, while we're on this topic of pressure, um, this was never like, this I've been through periods of my life where this was never an issue. So it's been very perplexing to be going, to be doing this work at such a deep level as what it feels like, but then to be having so many issues right now. And if I look back at like in the grand scheme of things, like what I ate yesterday versus like <laughs> what I would eat five years ago, like it's barely anything. And it's so clean and healthy like, well, but what is happening on the global collective energetic level is everything is coming up to the surface and so even though i'm eating way less food compared to what i used to because my body just simply simply doesn't need it anymore um even though i'm eating way less and i may be eating a lot of ingredients which are super clean I'm there's a lot of pressure that I'm feeling to just ref everything must be refined and if anything is slightly like unrefined it's it's a, because of all the pressure that's in the collective right now because of the great awakening that we're going through it's bringing this stuff to the surface whereas I might be doing the exact same thing that I did yesterday 5 years ago I wouldn't feel powerless and out of control, but because of what is happening collectively, everything, everything that's in there is coming to the surface. Um, and so there is a lot of pressure that I can feel internally that's, that is being created as, as the frequency of earth rises. And this is going to continue. And that's like this process that we're on, like, the, there's no jumping off the train like the earth is awakening the frequency is rising we're being blasted with solar flares more than the earth has ever had ever and like this stuff is happening and so if it, this is you and you've got stuff that's showing up in your reality like it isn't probably going to go away so you've got a choice and that choice is i either brush it off and keep creating these streams of consciousness or I go in and I do the work to heal it and elevate out of the situation because the earth is awakening uh, and we are all part of it. So we may as well jump on board and create a life of oneness and harmony rather than creating the the stream of consciousness of a stubborn, entitled little bugger, which is uh, <laughs> what I'm really working on. Yeah, and last... It, it'll die. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And lastly, just to say, like, everything you've ever known of your life, just let it go, because we're in different times now. And you will be experiencing constantly new, uncharted, charted territory. And your job is not to be attached to the life that you used to know and just get used to what this, the next, all of the years of your life here is going to be like, because it's not going to be what it's been. So there's a lot of processing for me in that too. And just detaching from all of that. 
Because me too. Like I used to be like five years ago, it would never be that. It's like, yeah, that was five years ago. <laughs> Just a totally different time, sis. Totally different time. Um, thank you guys so much for sharing everything. Uh, to anybody and everybody at home, I hope this really helps you to reflect deeper into maybe any physical symptoms that you are going through in your body and just to really sit with it and just open your heart to all of it. Uh, if you ever want to work with us, please do. We are now a mystical university and you can check out all of our courses that we will be offering in January, 2025. And if you want to join a group class called the power within, please do. It is incredible. And we are all coaches of that and share, subscribe, subscribe, like, um, it helps us to keep doing this, uh, podcast for free. So until next time, we'll see you guys then. Bye. Bye.